Historical Society. This is our last yesteryear program of the year, and it looks to be our biggest, so thank you so much for being here today. Um, we operate Eagle Bluff Lighthouse in Peninsula State Park, which closes next Saturday, and we operate Heritage Village right across the parking lot, which is currently closed for maintenance, but we'll open again the first week of June in 2020. So be sure to put that on your calendars and come back and see us in a few months. Um, with that, I'm just gonna hand it right over to the girls of the farm. We have a couple questions for you this afternoon. Who, by show of hands, has been to the farm? Great. Who's been there with a parent? Okay. Who's been there with a grandparent? A couple, good. Who's been there with a child? Who's been there with a grandchild? Who's been there with a great-grandchild? <laughs> well, the farm um, has been a part of many, many people's lives. So when we were asked to present the early history of the farm, we farm kids rose to the task because we lived through the farm's beginnings. That dates ourselves. Um, so we're gonna introduce each of ourselves. I'm Jan Lasota, and my mom and dad were Sal and Orv Shop. I was 13 years old when the farm opened. And I'm Marcia Lind, Ruth and Carl Schultz are my mom and dad, and I was 11. And I'm Jean Rabin, daughter of Ruth and Carl Schultz, and I was 10. <laughs> I am Julie Hero. My parents are Orvin and Sally Shop. I was eight years old when the farm opened. We did this in a chronological. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Lori Stashi, daughter of Sally and Orb Shop, and I was six. <laughs> Well, we'd appreciate if you hold any questions till the end. We've got a lot of slides to show you and a lot of things to say. Um, we have a couple of disclaimers, one being that we've got some slides that are pretty fuzzy. And when you think about it, they were you know, slides that were taken 50 years ago. Um, we also have some recollections that are slightly fuzzy, because remember that we're more than 50 years old, so you'll hear those two. We hope we are pretty accurate in everything we mention. Um, another disclaimer we have is that um, we're gonna talk about the families who started it and, and their names, but we are all gonna lapse into calling them Mr. and Mrs. because we were kids and we were raised to call those grown-ups, you know, Mr. Shop, Mr. Schultz, Mr. Evenson, Mr. Rolls. So you're gonna hear us lapse into that, but hang loose with us. So we're gonna take you on a journey through the conception and the beginnings of the farm, which this year is in its 54th year of operation. So the farm began when the Shop family, that was Sal and Orb, visited Old McDonald's little farm north of Milwaukee on Highway 41. We were coming back from a family gathering in August of 1964. And Old McDonald's little farm was a petting zoo. It included farm and forest animals. Now these are where those fuzzy slides are coming into place, so. You can hardly see what it was, but. It's our few slides at the very beginning. This is one of our favorite slides. This was their garden. And if you've seen the garden that Mr. Schultz put together at the farm, oh, I love their vegetable patch, you know? Wow, that's great. So um, We Shops brought that idea back to Surgeon Bay. There were conversations with the Schultz family around their kitchen table and with George Evenson in his cherry orchard. And everybody thought that a farm attraction was a venture that might do really well in Door County. But it was going to be so, so much more than a petting zoo. So the four couples and their children that began work in earnest in 1964 are these. We have George and Margaret Evenson, their children Linda, Kathy, David, Amy, Ralph and Arby Roth, their children Shar, Debbie, Candy and Cheryl, Carl and Ruth Schultz, with Marcia, Jane, John, and Carla, Orvin, Sal, Shop, their children, Jan, John, Julie, and Lori. So this was an attraction that was owned by local families, planned and created by them. It really was a Door County product. 
It wasn't someone coming in from another state or another county. This was a Dora County product. So we do have some of those original owners here today. Um, I know that Mr. Evenson is there. Do you want to just raise your hand, George? George. I know Arby Roth is up there in the top. You want to raise your hand, Arby? Sal Shop is there. Sal, Mom? Raise your hand, Mom. Okay. And we have Carl and Ruth Schultz that are in the back there. Carl and Ruth. Now, if there's any other farm kids between, besides we five, so any, any children of those owners, raise your hands. I know we got some around, good. Any grandkids of those owners, raise your hands, yeah. Any great-grands of those owners? Yeah. Thank you all for coming today. So all four of these men had full-time jobs. George Evenson was a farmer. Ralph Roth worked for the telephone company. Carl Schultz was the Sebastopol School Superintendent. Orf Shop was an insurance agent. So this venture was accomplished during their weekends and evenings and vacations. Now the women could devote a little more time to the endeavor, although you remember they each had four kids, so they were very busy. And Margaret was you know, a farmer's wife, so she was doing stuff on the farm as well. Also, I wanna say the older kids got put into service too because when our moms were busy and dads, we ended up doing babysitting or Marsha would rearrange the house, but you know, she was, they had things to do. So you might wonder, how, how do these four families know each other? So um, Carl Schultz knew George Evenson because Carl was the ag teacher at Sebastopol before he became superintendent. So through his working with the ag department, he got to know farmer George Evenson. My dad, Orf Shop, went to school with George Evenson. So they were high school classmates, so that's how their connection was. The Shop family lived in Green Bay for a while, and Roths had a neighbor, no, they had a relative that was a neighbor to ours. So they would come down and visit, and we got to know them and got to play with their kids. Now, in, in Sebastopol, neighbors were, like, Shops lived next to Schultz's, and the Roths lived around the corner. So those three families were neighbors. So the only two families that really didn't know each other before this venture were the Evensons and the Roths and they got to know each other intimately, we gotta say that. <laughs> um, each family initially invest, invested $10,000, and in today's market that would be about $82,000. A loan was acquired from the Bank of Sturgeon Bay. The business became incorporated in 1965. Um, no payroll over those first years was given back to anybody of the owners and their families. Um, of course, anybody they hired on, they would pay. But money was reinvested back into the, um, uh, into the system. Like, um, and every once in a while they had to invest a little bit more money to keep things going. As the years progressed, the families, again, didn't realize any financial profits, but they knew they had created something really and unique and worthwhile for the county. Now, no one in any of those four families had any experience in this kind of tourist business at all. But their unique talents of those couples, their vocations and their avocations, really meshed well to create the farm and to keep it flourishing. So you had a farmer, you had an ag teacher, um, a superintendent, a conservationist, conservationist uh, slash ecologist, a builder, a businessman. So all of those talents and lots of hard work and long hours created the farm. As they were planning, here's the model that went up in our basement. Now, again, sorry about the fuzziness, but a plywood model on a ping pong table. My sister says she never really recuperated playing ping pong well because she was robbed of some hours of practice. But if you can envision this, um, there's you know some trees on the side there. I think my John, my brother John's animals got stolen as plastic animals. But um, the front of this is where the road would be, where the highway would be. And so if you go from your left, that would be where the parking lot is. So there it's the barn and then the barnyard, and there's a big tree in there. There was a big tree in the barnyard for many, many years. And you can see the stable up front and then there's a lane that goes down. And then where the trees are on the right side is where the duck pond would be. As we were looking at this the other day, we're like, wow, they were pretty true to their model. That is what the farm ended up looking like. Now you might say, um, well, 
All eight of these people met weekly for a long time to develop their plan. And then later the men and women kind of split up when it became apparent what duties would work for each. So the men were more into the building and the animals and the ladies were more into the admissions and the gift shop and how that would be run. Now I asked him when we met a couple weeks ago, what, what did other people in this county think when you started telling them about this venture? And here's what some of their answers were. Who's gonna come and see a farm? <laughs> or a museum is never gonna make it. Or who's gonna pay to see a cow? But even, even our own mother wasn't sure that this was gonna be happening, you know? But look what happened, it was really quite a vision. Now they put a statement together of what they thought this farm should really be about. And now we ourselves, when we put this together, called it a mission statement. They didn't say it was a mission statement, but it's what everybody does these days, so they were ahead of their time thinking of a mission statement. So they were dedicated to the preservation of natural America and our rural to heritage, a blending of agriculture, cultural, ecological, recreational, and educational values and experiences into an exciting, satisfying, and enjoyable adventure for people of all ages, a short course in agriculture and nature, developed upon the premise, appreciation and pleasure are derived from knowledge and understanding. And Mrs. Schultz wanted to make sure we emphasize that last statement because that was so important to them. Appreciation and pleasure are derived from knowledge and understanding. So Orb Shop heard of some available property and once the family saw the possibilities of that property, they didn't even look elsewhere. It was, it was a done deal. So the farm was established in 66 on a 40 acre tract in Sebastopol Township that was the site of the first commercial fruit orchard in all of Wisconsin. The orchard was owned by Joseph Zettel, a Swiss immigrant. He had arrived in Door County in 1856 and he planted the first trees on that land in 1862. So those 40 acres included 18 acres of cleared land. Well, there were some dead fruit trees that they had to get rid of, of course. And 22 acres of thick woods. And it was easy accessibly, I mean, it was easily accessible from both major Door County highways. So it was making the tract of land just perfect for their vision. I'm going to tell you about the building leading up to the opening of the farm. The Bassford House was originally built in 1856 by pioneer George Bassford. It was the first building in what is now known as the town of Sebastopol. Family helped in the reconstruction. The Bassford House was moved to the farm in 1966 and the first cabin to be built there. Currently, the inside houses antique home items such as a cook stove, a washing machine, and even a foot warmer. Large antique farm equipment was displayed outside the Bassford House. The big red barn was built by Haifman Enterprise. Inside this barn are the admissions area, gift shop, restrooms, loft, and a milk house. Now the stable goes up. The women painted the buildings as quickly as they were constructed. I hope they didn't use that cherry picking ladder. <laughs> the stable was shelter for many breeds of cows and calves and the very popular kittens. Almost every farm had a windmill. This one was taken down from the Nelson farm on WD and placed in the center of the farmyard. A favorite activity of the young visitors was pumping the water into the trough where it was recycled to pump again. We're getting closer to opening day with the addition of the parking lot we're hoping to fill. <laughs> Stone fences were built bordering the lot. 
The covered well continues to be one of the most popular photo opportunities. With no water in the shallow concrete well, the visitors can climb inside. This pigeon coop was built at the shop home and transported to the, the farm by these very strong men. <laughs> And the brooder house was added to keep the baby chicks warm after hatching in the observation incubator. Fences were built to pasture a variety of animals. The young animal pens became the heart of the farm. The goats would soon frolic on the ramp built in their pen. And the duck pond was dug. Hmm, it looks like we were excited about a new swimming hole. <laughs> but soon the ducks and geese arrived. <laughs> Seeds and plants were ordered in early spring and the garden planted in May. Vegetables, flowers, herbs, and farm crops are growing in the bountiful gardens at the farm. The value of herbs in cooking is again being recognized, resulting in an urban renewal. In late summer, the corn walk is an interesting stroll through exceptionally tall corn. Visitors are encouraged to pick a four-leaf clover from the garden. Dad found wild crow fledglings and tamed them. This was their favorite perch at the farm. <laughs> In our home, it was at our breakfast table where they joined our family for scrambled eggs. <laughs> garden plants are identified. The farm also has a special poppy garden and a sunflower garden. To farm visitors, the woods was a park, movie theater, concert hall, museum, and zoo. A nature trail winding through the hardwood forest leads to the woods pond. The pond was stocked with a variety of fish, including bullheads, rock bass, and Johnny darters, to name a few. Frogs, tadpoles, and salamanders could be seen among the water lilies and other native water plants. Because Knowledge increases pleasure. Signs are provided, some with brief descriptive statements identifying the wonders of the woods. Picnic areas give visitors a place to sit and enjoy their lunch. A precious part of our American heritage, a prairie, was planted at the farm. Annual and biennial burning is necessary to remove dead vegetation and prevent takeover of woody plants, resulting in beautiful prairie flowers and grasses along the prairie trail. The animals were purchased, borrowed for the season, found through ads and word of mouth. The ladies and men traveled all over the state to pick up animals. Mom and Sal Shop headed to southern Wisconsin to pick up animals in the green station wagon. <laughs> First, they stopped and picked up a goat kid that rode in the back. Next stop was two geese placed in a burlap bag on the back seat. The, the bag had a small hole. The goose's head popped out of the hole as it got bigger. Sal kept her hands on the goose's neck the entire trip to avoid an escape. Probably urging mom to drive just a little bit faster. <laughs> Laddie was everyone's favorite farm dog. In the beginning, the animals were farmed out during the off season. 
After about three years, the winter barn and 12 acres were purchased. Noah's Ark, as we called it. Horses, cattle, pigs, goats, and more boarded there for the winter. Poultry and rabbits were kept at the shop homestead. Kittens were adopted out as they got too old and more were always found. My mother Ruth and Sal Shop never envisioned putting up hay when they signed up for this. <laughs> you go, girls. <laughs> as in all farm operation, the work is never done. The family's all pitched in. Off-season chores included the timing of breeding so that babies would be born during the farm's open season. The timing of incubation of eggs to always have hatching chicks in the nature cabin occurred in the open season. A welcoming entrance to the attraction was created in the big red barn. Emma Toff's wood-burning cook stove was added to the lobby. The building was set up to be used as a shop. Purchasing inventory, pricing, displaying, and reordering was the job of the ladies. Traveling to gift shows in Minneapolis and Milwaukee was, were always an adventure. The shop had something for everyone. We couldn't wait to see who got the job of unpacking and pricing 1,000 of these precious little porcelain animals. <laughs> Several women from the community demonstrated weaving on a large loom in the loft of the Big Red Barn. Beautiful handmade treasures crafted by Door County artists were featured in the loft. It was always fun to read where the visitors were from and their comments written on the guest register. Stop in the milk house for a cold drink or ice cream. The goat kids eagerly wait by the door for bottles sold to feed them in the milk house. A bird's eye view of the farm the year it opened. If you visited or driven by the farm in recent years, note how the view has changed significantly. More buildings and displays were added. Woohoo! The farm opened on Saturday, June 25th, 1966, well into the Door County tourist season. The first season, they were open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Only the first season. <laughs> from that time on, they closed at 5. The first ad appeared in the Door County Advocate June 23, 1966. Admission in 1966 was 75 cents for adults, 50 cents for children 12 and under. But guess what? There was a 20 cent off one adult admission coupon in the paper. <laughs> in 1976, it was $1.50 for adults and 75 cents for children, 4 to 13. And 2019, prices are $8.50 for adults, $5 for children, 3 to 12, still less than the cost of the movie at the theater. Season passes have always been double the admission price. The idea for season passes came from a visitor who loved the farm. She thought the passes would be a great bargain for the frequent visitor. So the farm was ever changing with new animals, buildings, and displays added each year. I'm going to talk about the buildings added after the farm opened. The IDM Bay Nature Cabin, a hewn white pine log cabin, was moved to the farm in 1970 from the town of Sturgeon Bay. It was built in 1854 by Carl Ariam, and between 1872 and 1881, it was used to house and board some of the workers who built the 
Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal. Currently, it houses the Observation Chick Incubator and has numerous displays that show and tell the wonders of Door County's natural world. Trees tell stories through tree rings. This cross section of a hemlock has rings from 1754 to 1966. <coughs> This 300 or 390 pound piece of pure copper was found near Carlsville. And there's also stories and stones. The rocks along this flayed stone walk outside the nature cabin have stories that tell the geological history of the earth. The Simon Woodshed is a typical woodshed that was moved to the farm in 1971. It was built in 1876 by John Simon in Sebastopol Township. This building was originally a dwelling, but as the Simon Farmstead grew, a larger home was built, and this building became a combination woodshed and granary. In the good old days, the woodshed was best known for the practical child psychology applied within its walls. <laughs> but this indispensable building of rural heritage was a utility and all-purpose facility for many farmers. It currently houses tools, wood planers, snowshoes, all the things that a well-stocked woodshed has. The Jaden Granary was moved to the farm in 1972. John Jaden, a Belgian immigrant, constructed this building in 1874 in the town of Union. He used large white cedars, some which were killed by the tornado fire that swept through Southern Dark County. Jane built it as a cattle barn with a lean-to addition that provided human living quarters until a log home was constructed. It was later used as a horse barn and granary. Due to the high cost of glass and heat loss, this building has only one small window. Displayed in the granary are seed varieties, barbed wire collection, a still, wine press, and a scale. It also demonstrates stove wood construction, which was a building technique used frequently in Door County due to the abundance of white cedar. On the top is a wind charger. This was a wind-powered generator used as a source of electricity in the 1930s and 1940s. And this is a stone boat outside of those buildings. The Sugar Shack was constructed in 1982, and as most of the buildings, it was a family project. It was an example of a sugar house used to produce maple syrup and sugar. These buildings were very common once in Wisconsin and Canada. It was constructed from repurposed logs from a building in the town of Neswapi and placed below the limestone ridge at the farm to facilitate gravity when unloading the tree sap from the sap collection. Every spring, delicious maple syrup was made here. The silo was constructed on the farm in 1987. It was moved from the Edwin Ash Farm. The silo is wood stave, which was the most common type of silo on Wisconsin farms of yesteryear. The farm was always evolving, but always had education as the foremost goal. This is an excerpt from one of the farm tabloids. Seen the Model T Ford, the wind charger, the stone boat, windmill, old tractors, and wood stave silo helps us to develop an appreciation for the resourcefulness and ingenuity of our forefathers. Were they really the good old days? <laughs> there are many historical fences and styles that are used at the farm. Nothing is more characteristic of Door County than the stones and stone fences. This is a stump fence. These stumps came from Carl Pino. And there's a rail fence, whiteboard fence, 
Uh, we had no barbed wire fences at the farm, but there is a display that shows the types of wire used for these fences. Pit gate. We also have a variety of styles. This is a stone style, a bypass style, a falling bar style, which was for forgetful people, <laughs> stair style, and alpine post style. Then the mach settle machine shed was added. And this houses the Model T. The first Model T was made in 1909, and over the next 19 years, 50 million T's were produced. This Model T was often seen in parades around the county. And there's an antique buggy and an old sleigh. The Evenson machine shed. This has a farm shop that displays the tools and equipment that kept farms a yesteryear in business. It also has wagon, some old farm machinery, and a collection of tractors. The goal was to obtain the smallest model of each popular tractor ever built in the United States. This collection includes an Oliver 6 standard, John Deere roll crop, and a 1939 case. Are you stumped? <laughs> this stump holder was used in Door County about 1860 to help clear the land. There's another old tractor. This is an example of the farm blueprints. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Shop often did sketchings of the buildings prior to building them. And a horse barn was added, a rabbit hutch, a dove coop. And again, the building was primarily done by family members. A pen for the peacocks and construction of the corn crib. Again, it was a family project. A turkey guinea coop. This is a small animal shelter. It has a display of old dairy equipment and also provides a shelter for the kid goats. And a chicken coop was added. A lime kiln. This was built by a local mason using rocks from the Niagara Escarpment on the farm, farm property. An arbor. A honey house. Long before settlers came to Wisconsin, the Native Americans knew the value of bees. So the early pioneers had two inexpensive sources of sweetening, honey and maple syrup. So inside the honey house, it tells the story of honey. A little horse barn. And this is the natural succession area. It's a one half acre track that's a Example of the long recognized phenomenon known as natural succession. Numerous basswood or linden trees were planted along the second entrance to the farm. This was named Linden Lane after a famous botanist. A milking parlor where you can have the experience of milking a nanny goat. A storage room was added to the big barn. And every farm has a good workshop. And my final slide is a very exciting addition. The outdoor restrooms. <laughs> I 
get to talk about the employees at the farm. Please raise your hand if you ever worked at the farm. I thought a lot of hands would go up. Thank you for coming. Our parents have always, always been very grateful for their many good farm employees. This is our grandpa, Grandpa Jack Shop. He grew up on the Mike Shop farm and farmed the Steinke farm after marrying our grandma. He loved doing farm chores and talking with farm visitors after he retired. Farm workers had to be knowledgeable to answer the many questions from tourists. There was no Google back then. <laughs> High school and college-aged boys and later girls have milked goats on the farm. There have been many generations of farm workers for some families. John Flieger and all three of his sons were farm workers. I'm not certain how many guys or kids have bagged corn at the farm, but it's a lot. At first, just the four farm moms worked at the front desk, but over the years, many terrific women have worked there. We all remember afternoons, we'd impatiently wait for our moms to finish at the desk so we could go home. We'd hurry things along by wiping down the steps, mopping the bathroom floors, and counting out change. Then we'd have to wait for the yard kid to walk around the entire farm, locking up the buildings and collecting the dimes from the corn stalks at the duck pond. We don't have any pictures of any girls working in the milk house. It's much more fun taking pictures outside at the farm. <laughs> this is our niece, Sarah, on her first day as a milk house girl. When we ran through this yesterday, the girls thought I said first date. <laughs> <laughs> Marcia, Jane, Jan, Lori, and I all put in our time in gingham check. <laughs> our parents worked together on all of the farm's advertising. This early logo was designed by Linda Evenson. The bags for the gift shop purchases were silk screened by hand. Marcia and Jane's younger sister, Carla, designed this logo many years later. These are some farm brochures and a postcard that was just the most fun photo op. Almost all the farm kids are in that postcard. Our dad designed boxes to hold the brochures. There's one on the archive table behind, uh, behind you. Um, he also claimed that the idea for Door County's Roadrunner brochure delivery service was his. <laughs> Other advertising media included postcards, tabloids, oh, the good kind of tabloids, <laughs> newspaper ads, fax, from the farm. Do you like the alliteration there? <laughs> Mr. Schultz and our dad created fact lists, and dad kept track of each when each fact was used on a primitive spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> there was a nature and an agricultural fact in each ad. There were posters and placemats ads in Sturgeon Bay and Door County magazines, coupons, coupon books. Um, we were included in a newcomer coupon book. Remember the welcome wagon? That's what that was. The blue wool cards were used for many years. We remember hours of rolling bits of wool and rubber cementing them to the cards. I think I can still smell the rubber cement. Carla Schultz decided, designed the clever red cards. And finally, the farm advertised in the Resort or Reporter every summer. That summer's intern would come and shoot photos. Then we'd excitedly wait for that week's issue to see the pictures. It was a pretty big deal. Getting ready for the season opening. This is our dad on a tractor. We kids helped when we could with preparations for opening day. It is a ton of work. 
My mom used to say opening day was the second best day of the season. <laughs> Tasks included, but not limited to, scraping, painting, vacuuming up flies, mowing, and more mowing, and cleaning off signs. There were three rewards for us when, as adults, we came home for Mother's Day and helped out on the farm. Number one, spending time with our parents. <laughs> Two was the wonderful picnics in the yard and in the milk house. And three was the letting of the ducks. This would happen late Sunday afternoon. Our dad and Mr. Schultz went to the winter barn with the red trailer and loaded all the ducks and geese who'd been there for many months. When our dads opened the trailer door at the farm and the birds saw the pond, they went crazy, racing to the water, making a riot of noise and relishing their first bath of the year. I wish we had video. <laughs> all of the animals had to be moved back to the farm Hay had to be put up in the stable before or after hours. And the gift shop had to be organized as well. It was great when extended family helped out. The Schultzes wrote <laughs> Evensons and Shops had the farm together for 10 years. It was just the Schultzes and Shops for 23 years. Schultzes owned the farm alone for four years. And in 2002, the Tank family purchased the farm. Mr. Schultz helped out after that, maintaining the garden and the woods trails for years. We were amazed to find this excerpt from the Press Gazette, including a quote from David 11 years before the Tanks bought the farm. The animals and visitors aren't the only ones who seem to love the farm. I couldn't think of a better job. I love the animals and people, and you can't beat that here, said farm manager David Tank, 23 of Sturgeon Bay. A recent graduate of the University of Wisconsin Green Bay, Tank started working summers at the farm six years ago. Tank, who has worked on his grandparents' farm as a teenager, has emotional ties to the farm. Armed with his degree in business, his future may lie off the farm, but he's having trouble leaving. I keep telling myself I must go on and do something else, but I keep coming back, Tank said. It's a part of me. Here are some current photos of the farm. You've probably all been this summer, so I'll zip through these. This is the natural succession area. We saw a slide of it before. It was just a field with a couple of saplings 54 years ago. Except for a trail, it hasn't been touched. Here, Shirley and her sister are gardening. Usually, you'll find Shirley behind the desk. When she gets some much-deserved time off, what does she do? She gardens. <laughs> Here are Shirley and Elmer Tank. Oh, no. That's not them. <laughs> Here are Shirley and Elmer Tank. We saw Jeff Tank earlier grading the yard. And here are David, Jenny, and their sons, Connor, Jeremy, Noah, and Mason. We are so grateful to the Tank family for maintaining the farm as beautifully as they do. Good afternoon. Wake up, everybody. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about some of the special happenings at the farm through the years, in no particular order. There were many years that we took the Model T out for parades in the county. 
It's been fun to look back over the years at these pictures as this first picture is the kids from the farm and the second is the next generation of kids. Carl Schultz wrote a book entitled This is the Farm, which highlighted both animals of the farm and plants and trees found in the area. Before the farm even opened, we farm kids went for the adventure of our lives. George Evenson recollects, on the 2nd of July, we were having an event where we had a wagon load of kids, the farm owner's children, riding through the grounds. This was being filmed for a local television news segment. Everything was going great until the horses came to the turkey pen. The turkey gobbled and spooked the horses and they ran out of control. Spooked horses running at full gallop with kids flying all ways, a nightmare. No one was seriously hurt. And the fellow who was there to take the video was so excited he dropped the camera. So there's no record of the event except the memories. They are still full color vivid. In 2015, Maggie Weir wrote and illustrated the children's book, A Visit to the Farm. The farm was included in the Reader's Digest book entitled Treasures of America and also the book Off the Beaten Path. We were featured in the book entitled Good Morning Door County. Great illustrations. The Door County Historical Society had meetings at the farm featuring fish boils. A presentation entitled Guess What It Is Show was given to historical society members by Carl and Orb. They brought an assortment of 50 tools and instruments and had audience members guess what they were. I wonder how we do with that today. And over the years, rehearsal dinners, weddings, photos were taken at the farm, mostly the kids from the farm. But in 2014 was the first ever wedding held at the farm. And even the bride was recruited to milk the nanny goat that day. <laughs> Land's End held a photo shoot at the farm in 1998, which included a pesky goat trying to get in each shot. <laughs> and a brave model with a piglet. We hope he had duplicate outfits along with him. We discovered a puzzle, a spring view from the cherry orchard across the highway. One of our cows became famous on the internet with his <laughs> presenting his tongue. In 1998, a hog escaped its trailer at Schultz's farm and it walked to town. It was winter time with snow on the ground making tracking easy. Police were stumped in how to capture the hog since hogs, have, along with many other animals, have a fight or flight behavior. With eyes on the sides of their heads, they have a very limited blind spot, so it's very hard to sneak up on them. Luckily, Mr. Schultz came to the rescue with a five-gallon bucket to put over the hog's head to steer it safely away. He later offered the police officer the bucket in case he needed it again. <laughs> For several years, we supplied Al Johnson with goats for the roof of their Sister Bay restaurant. School trips to the farm were always a highlight for the children, the teachers, and also the workers. Winter activity for the fourth graders was making maple syrup at the sugar shack. A highlight each spring was preparing for the big event for little kids in Green Bay where children would line up for a chance to pet the farm animals. In 1990, we were a reward for the summer reading program. In 1992, the farm was named Business of the Year by the Door County Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Over the years, we supplied animals for the living nativity for the Baptist Church in Sturgeon Bay. In 1991, a Soviet film director took footage at the farm and used scenes in a 30-minute film. 
The visit of the Belgians was an exciting day at the farm, even with the language barrier, complete with signs, laughter, and singing. Patrons to the farm in the late 90s lined up on opening day long before the doors opened, not to get their season passes or to pet a pig or to cuddle a kitten, <laughs> but to buy the latest Beanie Baby. It was the height of the Beanie Baby craze, and it was nuts. <laughs> we held a pumpkin growing contest for several years, beginning in 1967. You could get seeds from the farm mailed to you. Fabric designer Carol Gresco created a design with cookie cutter animals honoring the farm. We held goat milking contests at the farm. In 1973, it was the bank, of bank rivalry of Tom Herlash versus Calvin Falk. The next year was the wordsmith rivalry, shown here, the nimble fingers of columnist Keita Steves versus radio producer, or broadcaster, Ed Allen III. A following year was the Rotary Club members. And local painter Gerhardt Miller painted the farm's stump puller. Well, you've had a chance to see the, the farm during the summer season, so we thought we'd show you a few photos of it during um, its beauteous other seasons. So. This was a shot very similar to the one that the puzzle was made of. We have a great stand of hardwoods at the back of the property that are beautiful in the fall. And then we have some winter slides. Our parents often were out um, cross-country skiing at the farm in the winter. Well, over the years, um, fellow owners really became like family as we operated the farm together. Um, and the Tank family has really continued that same working relationship, the really family orientation. And we found this quote. This is from the Peninsula Pulse in 2015. Carl Schultz believes there's no other family in the world that can manage the farm like the Tanks do. The help offered by the Tanks' many extended relatives in the county ensure it continues running smoothly while holding on to the history that the original owners built 50 years ago. Now Dave Tank appreciates the farm for its ability to bring his family together. Each family member has their role and has allowed them to spend time together at a place that has been important in each of their lives for decades. It allows us to keep our family together in a way that I don't think a lot of families are able to stay together, said Tank. The relationships you have on a family farm or in this type of business you really are able to stay connected on a special level. I'll tell you, and I don't think many people can, but when you're 16 years old, and you can say today that the best job you ever had was when you were a 16-year-old kid, and you still have it today, that's pretty special. So thanks for attending today and sticking with us after our long, early history lecture. Um, feel free to ask any of the you know, original owner farmers, any questions that you have for them. We have an artifact table at the back if you want to check that out. And thanks again.